On today's list, you can expect to hear some theories as to how other dimensions or higher beings could exist, or how we could possibly prove it's all just one big simulation. If you want to question what's real, come take a journey with me through the top 10 strange scientific evidences of higher dimensions. Before we dive into today's video, you guys, I just want to take a quick second to talk to you about today's video sponsor, G2A.com. No matter where you're at in your gaming journey, G2A.com is the place for you. They are one of the biggest and best marketplaces for everything to do with gaming, and they also have sales that are sometimes up to 90% off. Every week they have discounts on items, so I am always checking back to see if some of those things on my wish list have a killer new deal. Whether you're just getting into gaming or looking to take your setup to the next level, G2A.com really has it all, and some of the best prices I've ever seen. Hit that link below in the description box to check them out. You don't want to miss out at all. Happy gaming! Alright guys, let's get into this list. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the 4D world. To start off this list, we we have one idea of how other dimensions could theoretically exist in our world. Basically right now we as humans can observe our three-dimensional world and depending on who you talk to maybe we already know about the fourth dimension although we can't see it as many people believe the fourth dimension is space-time. We know and can physically observe the other three which are of course length, width, and height. For anything beyond these three we can think and conceptualize what they might be or what they might be like but we truly have no idea what it would be like to exist inside of these other dimensions. So everything we know is 3D, but that isn't to say that there aren't other dimensions or that they can't exist. In fact, we can neither prove or disprove that they do just because we only exist in three dimensions. There are scientists out there who have come to the conclusion, or maybe having a hypothesis is a better way to put it, that if higher dimensions do in fact exist, it is highly likely that it would be nearly impossible for us to come in contact with them. I mean, they would have a completely different way of existing than we do, but just because we can interact doesn't mean we can't live alongside. I guess long story short, this is just the idea that just because we can't prove it doesn't mean that disproves it, and it's just likely that we'll never know. This idea comes from a study that was conducted in 2015 at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, which sounds like a place that only the CIA or Autobots are allowed to go. Your brain's gotta be this big to get in. Anyway, this study suggested that life could have spread via panspermia, which is the hypothesis that life exists throughout the universe distributed by space dust, meteoroids, asteroids, comets, that sort of thing. Moving star to star in clusters, scientists tested two possibilities for what might have brought life to Earth, asteroids and intelligent beings. These aren't the only two possibilities that exist, it's just the ones that they tested, but here's the thing, the researchers found that they were both possible. And to make matters worse, they would have followed the same pattern. Yeah, so good luck getting any concrete answers, you know what I mean? If correct, this study could mean that there is either life somewhere else in the galaxy or that some other higher beings or something like that does exist. In our number eight spot today, we have how? Okay, so this is a point that some people explain may show us that there is some sort of higher power or being or dimension involved in getting us to where we are today. I'm not saying that this is concrete proof, I'm just here regurgitating other people's ideas and theories and you can take them and do what you want with them, okay? This is a choose your own adventure zone, I'm not telling you how to think. Basically, this is the idea that was based on certain studies which suggests that the universe shouldn't have survived more than a second. As one example, the Big Bang apparently should have created equal parts of matter and antimatter, which would then cancel each other out, but as we're all standing here, literally made up of matter, we know that that's not the case. Instead, slightly more matter was produced, which then turned into the entire observable universe. We can't definitively explain why or how this happened, which of course is exactly why people have to come up with their own theories. At this point, I mean, there has to be a reason why, but your guess is as good or probably better than mine. In our number seven spot today, we have hyperdimension. Okay, we're not even halfway through this list and we're diving into some string theory. Buckle up everyone, I am certainly not an expert, so it's gonna be a bumpy ride. So in string theory, there's these little loops of vibrating stringiness. In the theory, these are what are called the fundamental objects of reality, and they manifest themselves as particles like electrons and neutrinos, or the force carriers of nature like photons and gravitons. They do this through their vibrations. So what we see is a little particle, and by 
see, I mean, we don't really see because it's so small, but what's even smaller is this vibrating stringiness that vibrates with different modes, similar to a guitar string kind of deal. So like how all strings tuned to A flat sound the same or play the same note, each vibration mode is thought to relate to a different particle. So all A flats are electrons and all E naturals are photons. Hopefully you get what I'm saying. So in string theory, particle collisions are these strings all merging together and then splitting apart. In this world, for the math to, well, math, there has to be more than four dimensions in our world. I'm sorry, I don't know enough about math to really fully explain this, but basically our space-time doesn't give the strings enough room or space or whatever you want to call it to do their little vibrating thing in all the ways needed for all the variety of particles in the world. Like, there's too many notes, if that makes sense. So basically this theory is suggesting that particles aren't just wiggling around, they're doing it hyperdimensionally. Right now, based on this theory, some suggest as many as 10 or 11 dimensions might be necessary. In our number six spot today, we have logic. Back in the 1940s, Kurt Gödel, who was a physicist, tried to prove the existence of God using math, and he based this on the argument by St. Anselm of Canterbury. I thought the whole religion thing was about having faith, but truth be told, if someone could prove to me that a higher power is real, I'd be fully willing to hear them out. The argument for the saint is as follows. There is a greater being called God, and nothing greater than God can be imagined. God exists as an idea in the mind. With all other things being equal, a being that exists in both the mind and reality is better than a being that only exists in the mind. Therefore, if God only exists in the mind, then it's possible that we can imagine a being more powerful than God. However, that contradicts argument one because nothing greater than God can be imagined. Therefore, God exists. I'm definitely not convinced yet, but basically where Kurt comes in is that in using this modal logic in parallel universes, he argued that if an all-powerful being exists in at least one parallel universe, that means they exist. As there are an infinite number of universes with an infinite number of possibilities, one universe has a being so powerful that it would be considered an omnipotent god. Therefore, god exists. In 2013, this idea was challenged by two mathematicians who processed the mathematical equation that goes along with this theory on a computer, and it was found to be correct. Here is the flaw, though. This doesn't prove that a god exists, it just proves that some sort of all-powerful being could exist according to modal logic. In our number five spot today, we have the valley. This is another theory in reference to what we were previously talking about, how some argue that the universe basically just shouldn't exist, and that in some way could lead some people to argue that this means some other dimension or being is responsible for our world. This theory has the world placed in the Higgs field, which is what gives particles their mass. The theory suggests that basically there is a large energy field that is stopping our universe from just like falling into a valley or a deeper field in which the universe wouldn't be able to exist. Okay, that sounds kind of daunting, but also nice and cozy. But based on the standard model of physics, if correct, a rapid expansion of the universe right after the Big Bang probably should have already moved the universe into this valley or deep field, which again would have destroyed it less than a second after it was created. I'm not gonna lie. This is another one that doesn't have me fully convinced, but it is still interesting to say the least. I think I'm just still hung up on trying to figure out what would be around if the universe wasn't? What the heck is the valley? Where is this field? And how could the whole universe fall? I love and hate science so much, it's the most conflicting feeling. In our number four spot today, we have the cylinder condition. For this theory of other dimensions, let's take a trip back to 1919, shortly after Albert Einstein. Yeah, remember that guy? Remind me to thank him for literally melting my brain while trying to research for this video. After he published his theory of general relativity, there was a mathematician and physicist named Theodore Kaluza who decided to play around with the equations within the theory just for fun. I guess that's what smart people do for fun. I just play Overcooked or Mario Party with Taylor, but I guess to each their own. So while he's just doing his Sunday crossword puzzle, he found something interesting when he added a fifth dimension to the equation. Nothing happened. The equations within the theory of relativity don't care about the number of dimensions that exist. Then, just to do some equations on master mode, Theodore decided to spice up this fifth dimension he was adding. He made it one that wrapped around itself 
in what was called a cylinder condition. This ended up creating a new thing that caught Theodore's attention. The equations were the usual equations of general relativity in the first four dimensions, but there was also a new equation that replicated the expressions of electromagnetism. This created a hypothesis that perhaps adding dimensions might, in the end, unify physics, which would kind of make sense of a few things that currently don't really. In our number three spot today, we have the glitch in the matrix. This is one of those ideas that makes you wonder if we are living in a simulation. Are there some other beings in a higher dimension that are playing around with us like Sims? Because if so, I got some beef with mine. According to theoretical physicist John D. Barrow, we can tell if the universe is a simulation by looking for mistakes or errors in it, and it's important to note that he also believes that even beings in these higher dimensions or an advanced civilization would not have a complete knowledge of our nature's laws. This would lead to mistakes or glitches in the matrix. The notable ones would be changes in physical constants, which are physical properties like the speed of light that are always the same everywhere throughout time. Or has it been? In 2001, there were researchers in Australia who claimed to have found evidence that the speed of light has been slowing down over the last billion years. This does contradict general relativity, and it's not something I'm ignoring, we're just talking about theories here. To further this example, astronomer John Webb discovered that light from a quasi-stellar radio source, or a quasar, which is a highly luminous object in the early universe thought to be powered by supermassive black holes, so he found that light from one had absorbed the wrong type of photons on its 12 billion year journey to Earth. The only way this could happen is if there was a change in the speed of light or in the charge of an electron, both of which are physical constants. There are people who disagree or don't see eye to eye with this theory that these things might just prove we are living in a simulation, but regardless of that, no one is exactly sure why physical constants stay constant, but we do know that they are imperative and critical for our existence, and really for the existence of the entire universe. Some would argue that they're so fixed and important that it just might be evidence of the universe being created specifically for life. In our number two spot today, we have cosmic rays. In 2003, philosopher Nick Bostrom suggested that the universe is actually just a computer simulation, which, yeah, clearly we've all heard that before, so what makes this one so special? Well, he put forward the idea that, obviously if true, this would mean that some higher beings, or being, would have had to build the simulation, but that means that the universe would have to be finite because all computers have limits. This means that maybe the simulation is detectable only if we can find the limits of the universe. To test this idea, German researchers built universe simulators on a lattice in a quantum computer, which fully sounds like a made-up sentence of fake words. During this, they focused on cosmic rays, which are atom fragments that come from outside of our solar system. They chose these because they have a finite or limited and definable amount of power, which leads to them deteriorating over time. They found that all the cosmic rays, when they reached Earth, had a similar amount of energy, a maximum of 10 electron volts. This is curious because it suggests that all the cosmic rays had similar starting points, like perhaps not so different from the edge of a simulation lattice on a quantum computer. Do you see where I'm going with this? What if we're all just one big quantum computer? I guess that would finally explain the cloud. In our number one spot today, we have the landscape. Okay, we're almost done talking about string theory for the day. I know I'm gonna take a nap after finishing this one. My brain just needs some peace at this point because I don't even know it's real anymore. Maybe nothing, maybe so much that I don't even know 99% of it exists. Either way, there's a chance that these dimensions we don't see or don't realize are exceptionally small and that they wrap up on themselves. And it's thought that if this were true, that every time we moved ourselves around in our four dimensional space, we'd be moving around these extra dimensions billions and billions of times. And these dimensions are where the strings in string theory live. After more smart people did even more math, it was realized that these six extra spatial dimensions that we talked about before when we were discussing how the particles or the strings that make them up need more room to vibrate and in order to do that, they need at least six extra dimensions. You know, I was doing a whole guitar thing. <laughs> so those extra dimensions, they have to be wrapped up in a very specific way, which is known as the Calabi Yao manifolds. I apologize if I said that wrong. These are named after two very prominent physicists, but here's where things get even more chaotic than before. There isn't just one manifold that could exist. There's like 10 to the power of 200,000. As Paul Sutter on space.com put it so perfectly, quote, it turns out that when you need six dimensions to curl up on themselves and give them almost any possible way to do it, it 
adds up. He also goes on to explain that, quote, each possible configuration will affect the ways the strings inside them vibrate. Since the ways that strings vibrate determine how they behave up here in the macroscopic world, each choice of manifold leads to a distinct universe with its own set of physics. So only one manifold can give rise to the world as we experience it. Unfortunately, we don't actually have an answer to that. But the good news is that string theory is always evolving. It isn't something that is finished. It's a theory. We have ways of hopefully trying to get close to the real thing, but we don't really know how right we are. Right now, the best response from string theorists is what is called the landscape. This is a multiverse of all of the possible universes as predicted by the manifolds. I feel like I'm in a really bad episode of Rick and Morty right now. <laughs> all right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.